Hello, my cryptoverse. Welcome to your source for everything crypto. Today is the week that I talk about ICOs. Each day I'm going to be doing a new ICO. And since next, the Neon Exchange released the token information uh, about the ICO, I decided that I am going to do that one today. Today, Monday, February the 26th, 2018. So stay tuned. I created something special for you guys. Before you came round. <laughs> All right, guys, so the next exchange is a, is an ICO that I'm actually really excited about, uh, but I'm trying to take a stance where I can be as unbiased about my own personal feelings about the exchange as I possibly can. Uh, there is obviously some information that is still missing, whether or not U.S. residents can participate. Um, from the looks of it, it, they didn't say that they could not, but that doesn't mean that we actually can participate from the United States. Um, so I'm just going to try and provide you guys with the information that I have. Uh, just briefly go over what the ICO is about, what the next token is about, and then um, go from there. Uh, so I created a PowerPoint. Uh, I'll try and make that full screen, and I'll probably go between the PowerPoint and also some of the uh, the white paper, the actual website, and, um, and briefly highlight a couple of different things. So I'm going to jump right in, um, and I'll, I'm will i going to make the display full screen so that you guys can see it, and then I'll, I'll walk you through what I had created. Okay, so the next exchange. Uh, the Neon Exchange is what it will be called. Um, Next is the token uh, that is going to be with it. And the token itself is obviously a multi-purpose token. And I'll get into that in a second. Uh, the real reason why we're looking at it is we're wondering if the next exchange is going to be the next 10x ICO. Um, obviously, uh, the first thing that I should say is that whatever I say here is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. In fact, I'm just a normal guy who enjoys cryptocurrency and hopes to present information for you guys to make a responsible decision. ICOs, as I mentioned later in this uh, PowerPoint, uh, are a very risky investment. Um, there are reasons why they are risky. Uh, some, uh, obviously, there are a lot of out there that are just looking to for, to make a quick buck and scam out with anybody's money that they make. Uh, I do not believe that this is the case with this particular ICO. In fact, I have high regards for this ICO, but there are no pointers uh, along the way. You don't have uh, an actual coin to look at to see how much it will be valued. Um, you don't have any working tech to see, you know, to draw where it's going to be as far as valuation. So there is a lot of risk there. Um, you could put your money in something that may go to zero. You could put your money in something where they just leave. So just make sure that uh, you understand the risk whenever you dive into an ICO and understand that it is obviously um, a gamble in essence. Uh, there are some better investments than others, and um, hopefully this is an investment that will make some gains for people that are uh, able to get in. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's jump in. Okay, so I just put a quote here, an investment is knowledge always pays the best interest. So if you have an investment in yourself and the knowledge that you're seeking, uh, that always is going to pay the best interest. Obviously, we're here for financial gains, but financial gains can be made by making wise decisions. So that's why I put the quote there. Um, <clears throat> next, uh, essentially, is I put it as his mission is a platform for complex, decentralized cryptographic trade and payment service creation. Uh, it aims to have a decentralized exchange uh, as a powerful exchange, similar to like a Binance or a Bitrix. Uh, 
the problem most recently with any DEX or decentralized exchanges is that uh, they're slow, the UI isn't very good, and things of that nature. Next sort of is taking on that endeavor to make a clean and easy uh, exchange as well as keeping it decentralized so that your funds are securely with you. Um, it also is combining the Neo blockchain in an off-chain matching engine in order to make these transactions fast and complex, which is an exciting thing because currently whenever there's a decentralized, decentralized exchange like Ether Delta, uh, you can't really make complex transactions, limit market, you know, those types of trades. So it's very limited in what it can bring. Uh, this is supposed to allow for complex transactions in real time. Now I, I labeled this POI as um, uh, points of interest. Uh, what are some of the points of interest? Uh, similar to what I had just discussed, but uh, that it's going to have a high volume of transactions, a high volume of trading. Uh, Binance uh, currently today uh, as I, I was uh, looking, was had, had over $2 billion in trade volume. So the question is, if Next comes out in the Neon Exchange, will it be able to keep up with this type of trade volume? That is an extreme amount of transactions and a lot of power on the back end. So that's one thing that we need to look out for as one of its points of interest. Uh, Next also aims to be a payment service. So it's not just simply going to be made for the Neon Exchange, but it's also going to be uh, a service where you can, you know, make smart contracts and using Neo and gas to go across the blockchain to make uh, different transaction types between uh, users. Uh, as I mentioned, it also aims to make complex trades. So the, the decentralized exchange will be able to handle more complex trades that, um, as I mentioned, are currently unavailable in other exchanges. Uh, so that is just one huge perk and one thing to look out for. And we're hoping that these guys can keep up their end of the bargain as far as that goes. Um, this section, I'm just going to be looking at the W's, the things that we want to look at, the why, what, where, who, and when of next. Um, this will hopefully give us an idea of what the company is about, the project is about, and whether or not we think that it's going to be a good investment. The first is why. Um, why is next important? It holds a, upholds the purpose of cryptocurrency decentralization, meaning that the whole reason that we are in this space as far as cryptocurrency, at least many of us are. Uh, I know a lot of people are here just for the financial gains, but we would like to uh, free peer-to-peer -peer or open markets. Uh, we like to keep things decentralized. At the current time, things like Mount Gox, uh, BitGrail, and NiceHash have all, where we held our money in a central location. There have been times where that money has been taken, it's been hacked or whatever. Uh, people have scammed that money. Uh, and uh, if there's nothing that we can do because we don't actually hold uh, those funds. They are held by a central um, entity, and that central entity could like I said, be hacked or just leave with your money, and there is no repercussions or regulation to stop them from doing so. So next coming in as a decentralized cryptocurrency, a decentralized exchange is really exciting and really enticing. Um, it allows us to hold our funds while the transactions and trades are being made. So that is obviously the, the reason why uh, there is so much hype behind this exchange. Um, yes, there are other decentralized exchanges, but what also it brings as far as you know, complex transactions and such uh, makes this more of exciting and more enticing. What? What is uh, next? Obviously, we've covered this a couple of times, but it is a decentralized crypto exchange and a payment processor. Uh, what also it is is a uh, allows for staking. So it's a coin that allows staking, and um, you also receive rewards for holding uh, the coin while there are transaction fees along the exchange. So that in itself gives the coin uh, next a lot of utility. Um, it's not, uh, I put Coinbase on here because Coinbase is a central exchange and, uh, you know, they essentially have high fees, high transaction fees. Uh, it is the most common for people, especially in the United States, to get into cryptocurrency. Um, this would just be an alternative for that, hopefully, in the future. 
But if it has the staking rewards, as it's mentioned in the white paper, and we could take a look at the white paper really fast, um, it, it lists a, a sort of a formula, a mathematical formula of what you would expect holding um, holding your necks in your wallet and the kind of, um, I guess, what you would receive as far as reward. Um, if I can find it, it's down here somewhere. Okay, uh, this is sort of a s simple example, and it's not exact, so do not take this as exact, but uh, what they're saying is that uh, there will be a lot of transactions, and of course, when there are transactions similar to a Binance, next, if you're holding next, you will receive some sort of a fee um, in conjunction with holding it. So it gives it more um, worth in itself and more value because you're also going to be receiving a reward for holding and staking. So that is one uh, really exciting perk of Nex and gives it a lot more value, in my opinion. Um, where? Where is this all taking place? The where is along the NEO blockchain, um, similar to an Ethereum blockchain, but this has got, there are obviously differences, and if you go through the white paper, it sort of discusses the differences between the NEO blockchain and the Ethereum blockchain. But um, the model I have written out here as far as making trades on the NEON exchange itself are, say, you and another person or one person wants to create a trade, and the trade is requested and then sent to an off-chain engine. Um, from there, there's a smart contract that is created and executed, uh, which causes the assets themselves to be, um, you know, create, uh, converted into next tokens along the blockchain so that it can be executed um, with the help of NEO and GAS. And then those users are then sent and receive the executed contract and the trade. So whatever they were making the trade and deal for after it's been matched, uh, they receive their tokens, uh, similar to if you make any trade on Binance, uh, minus the transaction fee. Um, this is also outlined in the white paper. If anyone, uh, I will have a link in the description so that you guys can look at this. But uh, that's the basic rundown. It does get a little more complex uh, if you wanted to read about it and how the tokens are um, essentially converted and that sort of thing. But that's the basic rundown. Basically, two people are making a trade. Those trades go into the off-chain. Off-chain converts it or creates a smart contract. And at the same time, the token, the trade is converted into the next token. Next token takes it, puts it back into. Uh, where the users had executed their contracts and and then gives them the equivalent of whatever they asked to be traded. Okay, so who who is next? Next is sort of associated a, um, with a lot of uh, organizations. They are a great team of advisors, developers, designers. Um, they have a lot of focus on the UI uh, of the next exchange, which is important because that's one of the issues now is that it seems like the overall UI isn't very good. Um, there is an interview uh, with one of the co-founders, Ethan Fast, and uh, I'm going to have a link to this interview. It's another YouTuber by the name of Lark, Crypto Lark, and he uh, he's talking with him here about um, essentially what his focus is. He is a uh, He's a guy who helped create the Neon Wallet. He's getting his PhD in human computer interaction and AI, and he's one of the co-founders of City of Zion. Um, but uh, the thing that they focus on, and they have a lot of designers that are focused on the actual uh, user interface, um, the usability of it. Do people feel like they're comfortable? Do they feel secure? Uh, is it easy to understand? Um, and that's sort of like his background is human computer interaction. Uh, so I'm really excited about that because I think that gives it a lot of value. Uh, as with anything, the easier it is to use uh, and the easier it is for users to understand and uh, also feel comfortable using it, I think that gives a program, a piece of software, a lot of value. So that is exciting in and of itself. And I think that uh, goes a long way to giving this project and ICO a lot of value. Um, this is just simply a picture of the roadmap uh, that they have laid out, uh, which you can find on their website. Now, when, when is um, is a difficult question because they have laid out a, a string of dates for the ICO and how to get into the ICO. Um, 
As I mentioned, I am still unsure if United States citizens are capable of getting in. Uh, they did not say uh, particularly that they weren't allowed. Uh, I have sent messages to see if uh, United States citizens can get in um, to in order to participate in, you know, the actual ICO. But some of the uh, dates are as follows. Uh, March 12th is the open registration. So this is when uh, they open the registration in order to uh, put your name in for the lottery for rounds one and two. Uh, you will have to fill out your KYC information and also, you know, give them information like your email address uh, and a passport number. Uh, this may be able to uh, be worked around with simply an ID, say if you were in the United States, maybe a driver's license or something of that nature. Um, March 30 is when the registration closes. March 31st is when the lottery winners are announced, and I believe this is a number of 25,000 people. So 25,000 people will be um, notified through their particular random number that was generated when you did your KYC. And um, at this point, you are able to, in round one, uh, be able to purchase about $1,000 worth of NEO or of uh, NEX and then in round two you're able to do $9,000 worth and as you can see here are the dates for round one round two and then after those rounds close there's going to be an open round um, which they have not determined the date for sometime in April so let's talk about the earning potential which is one of the reasons why we're here um, one good thing about Next is that it's a multi-use cryptocurrency. Um, it does have large aspirations. There are even aspects in the white paper that talk about its comparison to Cardano, which is a third-gen blockchain technology. Um, now, the potential market cap for it. Okay, so if we're looking at it, and the reason why I have 10x, possibly more here, is that uh, whenever they do the ICO, they are relegating the next token to be one US dollar. So one US dollar equals one next token. Uh, during the ICO, they accept NEO and gas. And uh, there's going to be a total of 25 million next tokens available during the ICO, but there's only a, a total of 50 million next tokens. So that gives it an overall market cap of 50 million whenever it's finished and actually goes to the exchanges. Now, if you look at uh, a Binance and a KuCoin, um, they also have a token that doesn't have as much utility as Nex, um, and their Binance's token itself is worth over one billion dollars. Uh, KuCoin was sitting around five hundred million. So, if you just take those numbers by themselves and just relate it to that sort of utility, then then the next token is somewhere between a ten x and a twenty x. It's as if it gets to $1 billion valuation. What makes this even more exciting is that uh, Nex also offers the staking capability. Uh, the token itself offers staking, which gives the, the token more value. People would like to want to hold it. Um, they receive rewards for holding it, which gives the token more value itself. People are going to want to covet it and have more of it. And it's also going to probably limit the supply because a lot of people are going to want to hold it. Um, that also being said, um, there is the aspect that they're doing as a payment processor. Um, so that's going to allow for third-party smart contracts to be created. And they also have aspirations of being a decentralized banking system altogether. So they, it is a very large project. Um, I'm not sure if there's enough tokens to go around for that project, but I, you can see that the value is definitely a lot more than just $50 million. At least that's in my opinion, uh, in a lot of other people's opinions, that $50 million market cap for this project seems extremely low. So there's a lot of potential when you pi into the ICO of making a 10x, a 20x, 50x, or who knows. Uh, when the coin comes out, uh, I just expect that people that were able and fortunate enough to get in the ICO, and this is obviously my opinion, uh, will definitely see a nice return on investment. That being said, there is a lot of incentive just to hold the coin itself anyways for long term because that valuation could continue to rise. 
Um, I mentioned here again the risk of ICOs. They are extremely risky. Uh, there is no prior data about the coin for valuation. Um, basically, we're taking these statistics off of coins that we see in the space, and these coins are not even an exact replication of what Next can do. So uh, you can't really say that this is a, a one-to-one uh, valuation because Next is essentially its own unique uh, coin. Um, right now, there obviously is no product to base the projections or tested output on either, So, which makes ICOs in general uh, a risky investment. And uh, I always uh, state that and that you should definitely take your time whenever you're deciding to join one because your money is going to be tied up for a certain amount of time, um, and it's possible that that could not amount to anything. Okay, so let's just wrap this up with this final quote. Um, and I think this is essential for anyone that's in the space uh, as, um, you know, a crypto pioneer. There has to be this pioneer, the individual who has the courage, the ambition to overcome the obstacles that always develop when one tries to do something worthwhile, especially when it is new and different. We are pioneers in the crypto space because we're the, we're the new adopters, the first adopters. And I think that uh, that is saying something because we're trying to take something that is new and exciting and, and push it worldwide to make it uh, adoption, adopted for um, everybody. I think eventually that cryptocurrency is going to be um, what is used uh, worldwide as far as currency and peer-to-peer -peer transactions. So this is just one step. Um, I think this is a great step, the NEON exchange and the next token. Uh, and I'm excited about this project. Um, obviously, with anything, you need to keep your head about yourself and, um, and just try and research as much as possible in order for you to make a decision that is uh, best for your financial situation. Do not, you know, trade your house in for to, to invest in. Uh, an ICO, you know, that sort of thing. So just be smart uh, with your money and um, everything will work out. So that's really about it. Uh, I will uh, leave the links in the description for their Twitter, uh, the actual web page. Uh, I think everyone should definitely read their white paper. I've said this in my, uh, my last video about it. Um, there's a lot of really great information on there. A lot of things they talk about as far as what they plan to do in the future. I talk about the next exchange and how it works and how it interacts with the payment services. Um, they talk about the reward and fee structure. Um, and obviously this fee structure is just an initial fee structure. Uh, some people were complaining that it was too high, but uh, they said that it was just an initial one that may not be what uh, it comes out to be. Um, and this talks a lot about uh, how it works, the off-chain matching engine, everything. So. Definitely take the time to go read this, especially if you're thinking about investing. Um, and I'll leave a link to um, where they talk about the actual token itself, uh, the ICO token information. So thank you for hanging out. Um, I hope this helped. And uh, let me know if you're going to get in. Leave us a like. Likes always are good for us. Uh, subscribe. And I will see you guys tomorrow with a new ICO to talk about.